All right. For for our lab, again, I basically find the uh, sample that is that called set windows hook es specifically. So let's go to the VM. Come here. Start. So for this lab, did I mention I am at the slide eight? And for this one, we will use Ruitap.com uh, API monitor here. Okay, please start this monitor. says OK. For well, here, set Windows hook, hook EX is, let's say, search it actually for using this one. OK, I just started from start menu, all programs, rootap.com, API monitor, and API monitor. Right? And I'm at here. Right, and in order, in order to actually see set windows for ES, since there are too many you know filter here, rather than walking through all of them, because there's actually some menus a lot of them. So rather than using this one, I want you to find set windows for ES search. You see here, right? And please click select set windows for ex. We are good here. How about oh, there is a okay? The difference between if there is a one API and A and W, the difference is uh, set windows for ex A is uh, expecting to get any string in ASCII format. In the, on the other hand, W is a white character. That's uh, Microsoft. Uh, it is slightly different from Unicode, but each each character is supposed to use a two bytes rather than one byte. Okay, that is called a white character here. So uh, the difference is only you know whether it's expecting ASCII string or the white character string. All right, select this two, and okay, another is you know, just. Uh, Hint is actually this uh, on the let's see uh, uh, slide eight the Magania how we wanna call it so anyway Magania this uh, malware is not actually uh, inside malware yes it is not put inside Windows who ES directly right it inject some code to sub a uh, different process right and then that process is uh, actually calling the set Windows who ES. Okay, so how about this? Let's have it as in here, have it ready, and let's open another explore. And go to desktop and malware class samples and this Magania. Okay, let's have it as it is. And how about this? Let's double click. This one, you know, when you see this uh, API monitor, you will see running processes on the left lower corner, right? This is already running, but since it is doing the uh, some code injection, you are interested in looking at some running uh, processes. The events that's coming from the running processes. So when you double click each processes, you will see monitored processes here, right? This there is a more entries here, right? Any question? What you work for here? 
let's just click some more I will actually click all of them just right so it is actually monitoring all the logging processes here and you see in the middle there's a monitored processes so this API monitor one when you double click each running process on the left right corner and the you will see the new entries at the monitored processes this uh, window window right okay so now I don't hear more clicking so I, I think you are ready right so let, now let's start this uh, malware smart ground here all right and you ask for the uh, are you going to monitor? Please select monitor. You ask, please keep press monitor. Right, basically launch the new process. That's why there's a well, there was a new process. One good thing about this this one particular one is actually monitor. Is you know you can. Uh, let's say good, whether good or not. I would say I would just uh, let you judge which you, which you know tool you prefer. But sometimes actually when I uh, looking at the uh, malware sample, sometimes this you know the OTM monitor works better. But sometimes you know Windows API you know monitor is, works better. But you, you can have both and then you know use it at both at the same time. All right. How about now I have it run for a while, so let's select pull in the file, pause monitoring. All right. Do you see any set Windows hook ES call? Now I see one at the explore.exe. Do you have this entry as well? How about the other processes? I don't see it. Do you see it? Other the other processes? Here we go. I try to see another one. Which process is? It was done by the malware itself, right? Okay, so I saw two processes that actually calling a set Windows for EX, right? And let's go back to then the word malware. Okay, I'm going uh, back to the slide, uh, slide eight at the part three. Okay, so we just run what part eight, uh, sorry, slide eight explained. And now I'm going to slide nine. So slide nine, uh, the question is, which hook procedures are installed? Can you answer that question? Which hook, which, which, which type? There you go. Yes. Do you see it here? Oh, this one actually it is interpreting some you know constant to the actual meaningful uh, macro here. Macro, right? So keyboard, mouse, and get message. Let's see. Does it actually changing the value here too? Yeah. When I actually select this one, then here. My uh, window is much smaller. But when you see here, see, set windows who yes parameters here. You actually have the value here, right? On the in the, in the uh, parameters window here, right? So the hook type was keyboard, right? It is actually you know looking at the keyboard, right? And but 
let's see, thread ID. How about this? I I will go back to the um, MSDN. Let's close this one. There are too many. I think I accidentally. Can you still see my screen? I accidentally closed the uh, uh, Internet Explorer. Okay, so let's go to set Windows Hook DX. Okay. Always you want to check the uh, MSDN website. So you said, you know, set Windows hook ex, it expect the type of event ID hook, right? The type of hook procedure to be installed, right? When you see in the MSDN here, it has all the definition, what it mean by some value, what it's actually looking at, right? And then you, when I go a little bit slow, uh, scroll more, they said WH keyboard is a type you know, values tool and says, see, install a hook procedure that monitors keystroke messages. Right? So you can see the more detail. But how about this one and this one? Okay. I will not uh, go very detailed, but basically what happens is once this event happens, then this function is a handler. I want that handler to be called when the you know, keyboard event happens, right? So it is uh, registering itself as a listener, right? And this module basically specifies where this function belongs to which DLL, the uh, module handle, right? We learned about the uh, get module handle, right? And this one is the um, parameter that specify which thread you know this caller is interested in. Right? If it's a value is zero, then it is interested in every thread. So any thread is getting an event, then you know call my handler. Okay. Any question about this API? Good. Good. Okay. All right, um, and let's go back to the here, right? When you see keyboard event, every uh, every thread, and this is a one uh, process, uh, the handler actual function, but where is this uh, DLL exists, right? Help. EB, you know, something that DLL. This is the DLL that has this, you know, function. It is most likely is written by the malware, right? We can go, go ahead and verify, but, you know, that's, uh, let's, we you know how to verify, right? Because we learned, you know, about the uh, process monitor, right? You can go ahead and then later on look at the DLLs actually being created by the uh, malware, right? So this set windows who get actually the same, right? Thread zero, right? And interest in the mouse event. And this one is a get message event. And how about the other set windows called ex call that was done by malware itself? Why do you think it is being called? Why do you think? It is said windows hook ex is only used in order to intercept uh, some events? Is it the only, only purpose? We learned another purpose why you can use, how, why you're using the set windows for EX. Anyone? I do want to do that. Anyone? 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 <laughs> yes, close. The set windows hook ex also can be used, you know, to inject DLL, right? So for this one, actually, when you actually uh, follow the API tracing, the malware actually calls the set windows hook ex. It immediately right after that actually it uh, deregister, 
did uh, hooking because it was, you know, uh, quickly call it, but, you know, the own, its own purpose for this particular call is, you know, most likely just inject a DLL to different, you know, process. That's what's going on here, okay? All right, so now let's look at, I'm a little bit going back to this one, Internet Explorer. Let's just still verify is this set Windows hook ES is actually still called by the uh, malicious code here. Do you see this DLM actually? Uh, let's see, this is call stack, but let's, rather than going through there, let's see there is a caller uh, information. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm going to just use this this output here. Okay. So what is call stack? It means you know you know the one function for main function. For example, my function is calling one you know, sub procedure. Then this, if the sub procedure call another prenup, then there is a call stack, right? For when you actually looking at this in you know, a call stack window, it actually see that this you know set windows hook ex call. Is being called by the some code inside EB6 uh, EB6C44 in some DLL, right? That is actually belongs to malicious code, right? The malicious code just generate this DLL, right? Because the handler where the was handler was located, handler was located in this DLL as well, right? Good. Any question? Or it's a very it's a simple, right? So here's, a, here's a one of the examples. Now you learned about the, okay, you know, the malware is calling save in those who yes, but now we just verify that okay, it is actually you know being called and actually being used for you know event uh, monitoring and then DLL injection, right? All right, let's move on to. So I basically while explaining. I uh, answered all the question and nine, and that is also explained at the uh, slide ten. 